Now, at the end of our last video, we were talking about doing empirical formula calculations. And we're going to start with one step of the process, which is determining the empirical formula. So first we'll determine an empirical formula. And then we're going to use our tools, a couple of the mathematical tools that we found in Tools of the Trade. And we're going to, to calculate from that experimental data the molar mass of our molecule. And if we have our empirical formula data, and then secondly, we have our molar mass data, we can find the molecular formula. So that's the goal between these two, is to find the molecular formula. Now, we would have to do some other types of experiments, some fancy infrared or Raman spectroscopy or uh, some other type of experiments to find the structural formula. But for now, we'll be looking at the molecular formula. Now, in step one of this process, we are going to be looking at the empirical formula. And at first, we'll do a few where this is given. And then we'll see how we are going to integrate the two of those into one comprehensive problem, such as you would see on an AP test. So let's move forward with that. Now, at the AP le pre AP level, this is what we learned. We learned this little phrase. It's a little bit sing songy. You could hear it percent to mass, mass to moles, divide by the smallest, multiply till whole. And I used to have my class say it together many, many times. And that's the, those are the steps. If you memorize that kind of little uh, poem, you will have your steps to doing an empirical formula. Now, these two steps were always present and you often had to do the first and the last and we're going to do one just like that so we can bring that back into your world of memory so to speak now the difference in ap is there's going to be a few problems that aren't quite as straightforward as percent to mass so we really need to broaden that to get to mass you got to somehow get to the mass of each individual element. And sometimes it's straightforward like per percent to mass, and other times it's going to be a little bit of a twist on that. Now, that will be step one. Now, assuming that your molar mass of your molecule is given, for instance, let's go back to our benzene. If we found the empirical formula of benzene, and we're given this molar mass of benzene, so we had an empirical formula of CH. So that means that the molar mass, it's just like any molar mass, it'll be 12.01 for the one carbon, 1.01 for the one hydrogen, and we get 13.02. And when we do that division, we get this whole number of six that we saw earlier. Now, there's never any multiply till whole at this point. That's only at the empirical formula stage. When we're going from empirical formula to our molecular formula, this has to be a whole number. So we would round that number if it was not whole and assume that that was experimental error that caused it to be something other than a whole number. So. We took that six once we found it, and we'll multiply it by the subscripts, one and one, and that's how we would have come up with the molecular formula of C6H6 for benzene. So we'll take a look at that. Now, the number of links would be equal to the mass of the chain, so if we knew the mass of a chain, and if we knew the mass of each link, we could calculate the number of links. And that's exactly what we're doing here. The molar mass of the molecule is like the chain. The empirical formula is like a link in that chain. And the number of empirical formula units would be the count of the number of links in that chain. So that's the analogy that's there. So let's forge ahead with that. And let me walk you through one of our problems, much like we would have done it at the pre-AP level. Now, in this case, we're talking about NutraSweet. I tried to find some interesting substances for you. And we are given the percent compositions for each of these. 
you want to watch them very carefully and make sure you capture the right per percent for the correct substance. Now, since percent, this will bring back what we learned a little bit in the last unit, since percent is an intensive property, and remember we also have the law of constant composition that tells us that percent is the same regardless of the amount, we can assume any starting amount that we want. Now, I could say pick my birthday, March 22nd. So I could assume that I have 322 grams of my substance, but then taking 57.14% of that and 6.16%, that's going to add some totally unnecessary algebra. So we want to assume something much simpler and 100 grams is the easiest way to deal with the percent. So percent to mass, if we assume 100 grams, we just drop the percent sign and add the gram sign. Now the sum of all percents has to equal 100, and in this case then the sum of all grams, because we assumed 100 grams would equal 100. So if the problem neglected one of these percents, any one of these percents, whether it was nitrogen or, or, or oxygen, we could always find one of the four via subtraction. So that's the percent to mass. The next is mass to moles. Mass to moles, we use molar mass. Now note that our oxygen, our nitrogen, and our hydrogen are bonded in a chemical. Don't be tempted to use the diatomic mass for these. We're not talking about pure substances. We're talking about nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen within a compound. So we have a compound that is CX, HY, NZ, I ran out of letters, OQ. Doesn't matter what letters. But we have some sort of letters there. They're bonded in a compound and so we don't use our diatomic masses there. So you notice that I used each individual elemental mass there. Now the next step is divide by the smallest. Now the reason we divide by the smallest is that this x, y, and z have to come out to being whole number ratios. You don't see formulas with fractions in them. So we need whole number ratios. Not only that, but we need whole numbers and it has to be greater than or equal to one, greater than or equal to one. So if we divide by the smallest, then the smallest value when we take that ratio is going to be one. So we're going to end up with one relative to numbers all bigger than one or larger than one. So in this case, we look and see what the smallest is, and nitrogen was our smallest moles. So you notice that I divided all of the moles by the smallest. We do the same thing to each substance. That's why I like to work these almost as if they're in a spreadsheet. Now, we get seven for this, 8.97, which I'm fine with calling 9. It's very close. We have 1 and we have 2.5. We cannot round 2.5. You can round if you're under, say, 0.15 or so compared to the whole number. But otherwise, you have to multiply to get a whole number. So if we had some number 0.2 or some number 0.8, what we're going to do is multiply by 4 to get that, excuse me, 5 to get that to a whole number, not 4, sorry about that, 5 to get that to a whole number. If we have some number 0.25 or some number 0.75, we're going to multiply by 4. There's the 4 because that's a quarter or 3 quarters. If we have a third, so some number 0.33, some number 0.66, we're going to multiply by 3. And if we have a half, we're going to multiply by 2. 
It's what it will take to get it to a whole number. So I have to multiply this one by two to make a whole number. But I won't hold my appropriate ratio of moles unless I multiply them all by two. So that's why I multiplied every one by two. You shouldn't have a situation where one is multiplied by three and the other has to be multiplied by two. I've seen it on occasion. I doubt you'll run into it. Uh, but if you do, you if you have to have one that you multiply by three and one that you multiply by two, what you would do is multiply by six. I, I sincerely doubt you'll come across that. They're much more straightforward than that. So now, what is our empirical formula? We have C14, H18, N2, O5. And so that would be our empirical formula for our NutraSweet substance. Now to get the molecular formula, let's go on to the next page. We'll do that quickly. For our molecular formula, we're given this molar mass. So this was given. We calculate this molar mass exactly like we would do any molar mass. And I show you that here. The 14 times carbon, 18 times hydrogen, 2 times nitrogen, 5 times oxygen. And so this is the molar mass of our empirical formula. We get 1, which means that our molecular formula and our empirical formula are one and the same. And that's reasonable. That, that can happen. Now, we're going to move on to a slightly trickier problem in our next example with empirical formulas in our next video.